so Nicole over there on the end, you've already seen her present earlier. Uh, Chuck, just our last presenter, of course. Um, so I think those two, you do know their positions and everything like that. Uh, go ahead and grab that mic if you would, please, Mark. Um, so as the new person joining us, go ahead and introduce yourself uh, and, and what you do, where you work, and what you do. Yeah, I'll make it real short. Um, I'm, in the, <laughs> I'm in the insurance restoration business, uh, property, so wind, water, fire, hurricane, a license adjuster, have an in, uh, independent adjusting firm, construction company, <clears throat> supplementing company, and uh, manage repair company. So I run a direct repair company that uh, now gives out uh, projects from the carriers to contractors. And we manage all the estimating, supplementing, uh, and cleanups. Awesome, cool. Um, and I'll just remind everybody, including our moderator as well, make sure you get the microphone all the way up there so the WebEx folks can hear you. Um, so thanks very much, Mark, for joining us. And I'll introduce our keynote moderator, uh, our moderator for the panel, who was our keynote speaker a moment ago, Matthew uh, Warda, again, our director for product management in the, the uh, direct digital labor area, if you didn't hear his keynote earlier and you're just joining us. Um, so Matt, come on up and ask some questions, and then all of you will be asking questions in a moment. So start thinking. Thanks. All righty. We'll start out with an easy one. We heard from some of you already. So um, AI. So we've heard about, a lot about AI today. Question on whoever wants to answer it, one or all of you. Where are you at within your AI journey? Are you investigating? Have you gotten some value from it, or are you on a path to value? I'm on a path to value. Just started with Salient uh, six weeks ago. So probably need to. <laughs> I'm still in the first trimester. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, so um, as you all heard in our presentation earlier, we've been working with Salient for nine months now and have um, derived a lot of value via automation and um, starting with, with generative AI. We are really looking forward to our Ask HR and Ask IT bots that we are in development of, um, of being able to take those small teams and really augment them to be able to provide our staff with quick answers without having to tie down those staff members in those small departments. So those are some two use cases that we're really looking forward to implementing within the organization here shortly. So um, being a government agency, um, we're still developing policy around what we're allowed to do with AI. Um, and that might sound like a cop out, but they're being really, really careful about it, right? Uh, we, you know, we gotta make sure we, there's no bias in what we're doing. There, there's a lot of things that play in when you're doing human services sorts of things and things like that. Um, given that though, I, I know that our team of folks, the admins and our developers that, that work directly with, with our customers within the county are, are pushing hard to see if we can push that envelope a little bit and, and suggest solutions that we want to implement and try and help drive that policy by saying, look, we really need to improve this or that. So that's where we're at. Thank you for those. So if we look at the contrast between, you know, heavily regulated, needing to go through the process versus already on the path of success um, for you there, how do you measure and how did you get the approvals to do AI within your company? Or how, how are you getting them? That's not me, so. Either one. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I ask myself, and then I have a beer, and I'm good. <laughs> yeah, I know on that side of the fence. Um, yeah, it's uh, it was something you know I've obviously entertained. Uh, we've had issues with growth. I mean, too much growth, too fast. Uh, so I was working with a couple other legacy CRM managers and all of that over the past eight months, and just decided to pull the trigger buy buildings, open up call centers, hire more estimators, and uh, then sent an email to IBM and say, connected me with Salient. And so now, um, don't have to do any of that, which is awesome. Uh, my estimators go from six to eight files per day to now 40. Oh, wow. So it's a big metric, and we're able to uh, you know, expand. Instead of one to two states first year, three to six and with how fast it's going you know up to 50 and three to five so it's moving really fast those are incredible results 
how did we get approval? So um, we just ensure that we are putting together proposals for these type of technologies that we are wanting to embrace and really bring into the organization and presenting it to our CEO um, and ensuring that the association really knows kind of the path that we're on um, and understands that we are bringing generative AI into the organization so that we can move further faster um, and ensure that we maintain speed with the rest of the world and are not left behind. Thank you. I've got more, but is there any questions anyone here has for the panel? Um, well, I have two, sorry. Um, so the first one is go for the uh, best and um, sorry, for the BV. And for the nine months, very impressive long list of product being placed. Uh, my question is, do you have unstructured content? If so, how do you host it? I don't see that on that list. Uh, so that's a question for BBB. The second one is for Chuck. Chuck, you mentioned on the very bottom of your, your you know, day task is your spare time, right? And in it, you're talking about CP4BA in the future. So my question is, um, what are the value you see that, or the driving factor for you to look into CP4B? And what are the challenges that to move forward? Thank you. Just to clarify, did you say structured content? Yeah, not okay. structured. No. Because I know you have that, but I don't see any content. I just yeah. outline. No. So un unstructured as in a document or video or something that's not a data in a database, I think is what he's saying. Say a contract. Um, yes, we do. But I think we are trying to get ourselves into a place with the rest of our data and our structure before we move um, you know, forward with those type of, type of areas. Um, we have a lot of opportunity. That's what I always like to say about um, working with the organizations. We, there's never a lack of opportunity. So working on that and then moving forward with, with other things. And out of curiosity, what are you putting in discovery right now? What kinds of data go in there? We have, um, we just started this last week. So we have, a number of just our kind of proprietary documents that we are inputting so that we can call that information when we are putting it into the assistant to try to get business the business acumen to the agents quicker. Okay. Okay. Good. That's that's an example of starting on that journey. So great. Thanks. And I think John's question was, you know, what do we see? Where do we see the value for CP for BA? Um, did I get that right? Yeah. So kind of answering off the cuff here, but I, I know that Paul and Glenn and I have talked about it a lot over, over time. Um, for us, the, and the vision for the larger county is to move things to a cloud platform. Um, and in our case, that generally means ARO or Azure. Um, the value I think that, that we see in that is is that we can get away from a lot of the infrastructure things that we've had to do in the past. In the last year, we, we, we had to upgrade all of our Windows servers that are a part of our FileNet platform. For us, that's 35 servers. Um, that's not counting the database servers or other things like that. Um, and then things like Friday that happened where everything's running on Windows servers and we were down. For us, the value there is being able to move to a, a, a platform where there's less infrastructure for us to manage so that we can spend more time trying to optimize the applications and, and, and get more value out of the product itself and not spend so much time doing the churn of infrastructure management, to be honest with you. So, plus, I guess, I guess the other part is the, the promise of the cloud pack is right. There's all these integrated things that work together. <laughs> like I said, the promise of the cloud pack, hopefully that is true. But the challenge is basically what do you, yeah. what do you think IBM or others, you know, partners could help you? Well, so for us, the, one of the big challenges is just how do we go from, like you saw in my presentation, an on-prem environment with a petabyte of content um 
how do we move to that cloud-based environment in in some way where we can kind of keep the old and the new running together in sort of a hybrid way and we've talked internally a lot of different things about that you know can we move navigator can we move baw can we uh, and then what about all the content and somebody said earlier ldap's got to be really close to the <laughs> right so there's lots of problems to solve there and that that's kind of where we're at with that process we're, we're doing some proof of concepts with on-prem things to learn more um, but that's where we're at so any other questions out here over there So I know we've talked a lot about generative AI clearly, but uh, I think with you know all of your respective places and I'd say different parts of the journey towards business automation, what are you looking at that's not generative AI as far as like traditional kind of use cases or traditional like what's next? Is it moving your current footprint to the cloud? Is it you know adding additional capabilities? Are there certain things that are kind of not the cool new generative AI use cases that, that you think are interesting? Well, I guess I can, because I'm still on that side of the fence. Um, I, for us, a, a lot of it is improving the way that we work with our customers and building better solutions, right? Um, I really like the salient AI, and we're a BAW customer. I'm like, how is that built? That's going through my head, right? because uh, we'd really like to deliver more value faster to our end customers. Um, and whether that's in a traditional environment or in a cloud-based environment, that's still the goal, right? It's still, can we improve the customer experience? So that that's not directly my team, but it's something I think about a lot, to be honest with you. So, So prior to um, the past nine months, we really did not have any sort of, you know, business automation platform that we utilized within our organization. So all of this has really come up quickly and we've been able to execute very quickly on a lot of these things. So we still have a number of um, concepts in the back of our mind that we want to be able to deliver, but you know, very similar to what Chuck said is that we want to ensure that um, our client is receiving the best possible service and the quickest pace that they can receive it. Um, we have a old IVR system, for example, um, that we would love to be able to upgrade to a more modernized type of, um, instead of saying like, press one for this, right? You're actually having a conversation. So using natural language to be able to have a conversation with the IVR, um, to be able to help answer questions quickly and efficiently for the customers that are calling in to which we don't necessarily have that capability um, at the moment. So that's one example of, of what we're looking at utilizing. Yeah, we have the same problem as you too. I've never, never been into it. Uh, our biggest issue is we want full transparency with the policyholders, uh, the adjusters, the vendors, the contractors, everybody above, you know, all being able to Domino's order track, so to speak, their claims process, right? And so we've been doing that organically for years and putting those all together and knowing that it's capable now of doing that uh, is really exciting. I mean, it's, it's amazing. So being able to have every single person log in whenever and you know, not suck up the call center time, admin time, people power time, and just have them be able to do that. And again, full transparency, everyone sees the same similar, depending on what we want them to view, but everybody's getting what they need to see, want to see, and knows where they're at. So that's where we're at with that. So they go off of that of a question I've been asked many times in many conferences, so I'd like to ask you guys the same thing. If you would look forward in two to three years, where do you think you'll be with Gen AI, or what can you imagine and AI will be, or automation will be, and, and what will be interacting with your company be like? I'll put four of my five, uh, four of my five companies out of business. <laughs> Was hoping for something more positive. Um, gosh, two, three year, two or three years down the line, like it's, um, 
there's so much possibility out there and with it's just time effort bandwidth to be able to execute on the things that we want to be able to do um, but I definitely foresee that we will have the assistance in place to be able to augment our team in a way that they are able to stop doing the mundane tasks that they are doing stop being able to update an address and having a system be able to update an address for us um, as well as them moving to more customer centric focused work i mean our, our dream is for that to happen in a year but um hopefully two to three years for sure <laughs> thanks any other questions from audience Thank you. Uh, this is Man from Volkswagen Financial Services. First of all, thank you for the presentations and the opportunity for have this dialogue. Uh, from an investment in AI perspective, and I think from your vantage point, what are some of the metrics you track to, re to track the return on your investment? So if you could just uh, kind of share your thoughts on that. Yeah. <laughs> so um, for instance, uh, my rollout or build out, on the AI side, <clears throat> from what I'm saving on the estimating and call center sides, it pays for itself and I profit off of it. I don't have to hire, I don't have to train, and legitimately it's free. Best way I can explain it from a business owner perspective. And then the next one will roll out and it's kind of the same, similar, right? So that makes sense, short, but get it. I mean, similar. Um, one example is that we had recently in our RPA, right? We were able to save our team members an estimated 45 minutes per contract that they were sending out, and they're sending out, you know, five to seven contracts per week. So instead of those team members utilizing that time to input contract information, send it out, retrieve it, and being able to upload it into a system. Um, they're now able to utilize that time to be able to to sell more contracts and bring in more revenue. So not only are we looking at it from a you know headcount perspective, but also from the time from the opportunity of revenue that they're able to bring in, as well as the customer service that is being able to be provided um, to the customers that we're servicing. So Nicole, like the question, well, your response raised a question that that I see asked by many many customers that I interact with is around again the KPIs. Are you, and and are we looking at using AI and automation to reduce headcount or just increase throughput with the same headcount? Or how are you looking at it as the impacts to the your your employees? Yes, um, to our current employees, it is not necessarily a reduction in headcount. But just ensuring that the headcount that we do have is able to execute on their jobs appropriately, quickly, efficiently, um, as well as being able to you know, move potential headcount from resources that are answering phones more to revenue generating resources. That's so okay. Um, so on the estimating side. Like I said, we could go from six to eight files per estimator to 30 to 40 per day. I also, to do that, I had to reduce that pay by 70% to them for my new business. And I still kept everybody and they're making more money. Yeah. Okay. So that's good. All right. Any other questions? Probably an easy question, but maybe not, because uh, you're all in different stages with your AI journey. Do you, or and if you do, how do you talk to or publish or market your AI capabilities or what you do to make your company better leveraging AI, or do you stay away from it entirely and not even mention it? <laughs> I'd have to go with. Uh, not marketing it, it's just there, right? Less is more. Uh, they don't know what's going on in the background. I'm finding a lot about what goes on in the background, which I, you know, six months ago, I had no clue. And it, I mean, every day has been unbelievable. Luckily, we're working with a great team here at Salient because they actually understand my brain. 
happen. <laughs> Most people don't. I only have about three that have been under me for a while that do. But uh, no, it's been awesome. It's been really easy. Like I said, we've made more headway in six weeks than I had in the prior eight months. Thank you. Sorry. I would say we don't, we're not at a stage where we're publishing anything or marketing it, but we do have a um, content generator that we utilize for a newsletter. So when that is put out to our subscribers, our newsletter subscribers, it does state that it's AI generated. I guess I just have one kind of comment along. So our company really isn't there yet, but you know, I've been in this game for a long time. Um, I have a backpack that says Lotus Notes on it back in the corner. <laughs> We're still running Lotus Notes. Right, so right. Know. I mean, some people still are. Awesome product. We can argue about that at a happy hour if you want. Um, but honestly, when I got into that game, it was about process improvement, process reengineering, quality. That's really no different than what we're talking about with AI today, right? It's just better, faster, stronger now. You kind of go through the same process that we did back then. Um, you get around this game a, a long enough, you see the cycles happen, right, with different things. I'm I'm really hopeful for what for where we're going, and what we can do with large language models and Gen AI and all that things. Um, but it's it's really always been, and I think all of us are on that same page about improving the process and making it better. And by doing that, the employees have more meaningful work, the data is more accurate, we, it just all gets better, right? So if that's Gen AI that's helping that, great. If it's a BlueWorks Live process diagram that makes you understand better what your business is, that's great too. So that's my two cents on that process. Good. All right. Uh, if you look at, you know, since I run product management, any capabilities as you're coming across that you're, that you've said, hey, I wish, it doesn't have to be AI, it doesn't have to be, you know, any one area, but within the automation portfolio um, that you wish that we would bring to bear faster or something you can achieve. <laughs> yeah, I got a list. Here we go. <laughs> so I, I know this is already in the works because yeah. we, we've demoed it, but, and I'm a little bit biased being in the department that I'm in, but we are really excited about the business intelligence tool that IBM is putting out here, I think next quarter at some point. Um, BI assistant? Okay. Yes. So right now, you know, the, the time that it takes our data team and the analysts that we have to pull information from our system and put it into whatever platform they're utilizing, Excel, Power BI, any of those, um, it, it's a lot. So being able to just use natural language and give access to our team members to be able to pull that information themselves, um, especially our leadership team is going to be huge and it'll be able to help us make decisions quicker and faster. So we're excited about that. Cool. No, all right. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. No, the uh, the kind of same similar to her is like we have we have a lot of issues, a lot of documents flowing, a lot of photos, all of that. I uh, I forget who it was who showed just the simple photo of the crash car with the estimate, right? Like that's kind of the business we're in or I'm in. Uh, yeah. In theory, I mean, I'd, I'd like to see it, but yeah, they'd look forward to something like that because we that's the main, the main time we let our estimators, you know, we want to let the cooks cook. Yep. And let them just focus on what they do best. But, you know, those are our biggest problem points is that we getting away from them, just having to analyze photos themselves, that type of thing, label the photos, yeah. all of that. I mean, we can, I feel like we can get there and cut that time off. And then we're exponentially increasing the file flow per, per head or per estimator, you know, than we've had in the past. So, I mean, maybe it's 80 a day in a right. year or two. Right. Okay. So, yeah. So more of the, what I was bringing, this morning, like the multimodal models that can do multiple, you know, AI against multiple form factors of information. Okay, excellent. 
So I'll, I'll ask one myself. I think this is an interesting question. Just think about it from the business standpoint, operations and technology. I think we have kind of all those things kind of represented to analysts, et cetera, on the, on the panel. So when you're considering where to put your infrastructure, and you're all in different places, by the way, but some of you using SaaS, some of you not using SaaS, some of you on maybe a managed platform, what are those decisions like for all of you, right? Do you put, do you kind of just use SaaS as your default? Do you do you use on-prem as your default and try to get to SaaS? What's what's your approach for deciding all that? I think for me, because we're so early, is whatever we can get to quicker is kind of where we're at, right? And then we'll just work around. It doesn't matter what should come first or may come first, it's what can come first. And then we just work through that on, on our end. You know, again, we're fresh. I, well, for us, I think it's two things. One is, uh, you know, where's our skill set at, right? Um, one of our one of the impediments for us to to move to OpenShift or the cloud platforms is we don't have skills in those areas. We have lots of people that know how to use VMware and Windows and Linux and things like that, but we don't have that cloud platform skill set. So that's challenging for us, um, even though that's kind of the architectural direction. So that's so we probably would default to what we already know and then hope to move later, so. Right now we're um, on all SaaS and on the cloud. Um, I know that it could shift at some point in the future, but at this point that is where we're at. Anyone else? So we have about five more minutes to wrap up. <laughs> so going back to your comment, I'm glad you, you, you mentioned that in terms of the uh, current skill set. So uh, with, I'm not speaking about our company, I'm just speaking in general. If, if uh, your current uh, IT organization is not experienced with those type of skill sets, uh, what, what advice do you have? Um, you know, in regards to going and going down this road and this path and trying to implement as quickly as possible. I mean, to be honest, I'm, I'm kind of here looking for answers to that question, but, um, uh, I, well, yeah, obviously, right. We, we work with some great partners that are in the room, uh, genus technology, and they're, they've helped us kind of in that learning process. Um, we set up some proof of concept environments. And we're trying to learn about how to do those things ourselves. Um, obviously, there's training classes and things like that that people can go to. Um, our, as an organization, we've been pretty good about um, training up folks to do new things on on Azure. I mean, I know that's not a popular word here, but um, so that part of our organization is kind of growing and developing power apps and those kinds of things. Uh, but for our team of folks where it's more of an infrastructure based thing, um, I don't, yeah, you certainly can go to classes or, or work with partners and, and hire out that part. Um, but for the folks that have to run it every day, you kind of need that experience built up to get there and be comfortable, I think. Anyone else? Okay. I think uh, one, I've been on several uh, question and answer boards. So thank you for volunteering and thank you for, for willing to do this and, 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 and offer your knowledge and experiences to, to the rest of the community. Um, I personally thank you as well. And I think it's, it's quite amazing if either so if someone asked you or what this, the spectrum of experience, like we've got a, you know, over a hundred some year old company, we've got heavy regulated, you know, state and then you know, a smaller organization in comparison, right? But all of you in, on the same journey together. And uh, very few times if I can I think about it from a technology perspective where I could see this, this mix sitting together um, on that journey. So that's awesome. <laughs> so again, thank you. And then, you know, a few minutes for happy hour and anything else? Yeah. Jeff? Couple announcements first for a round of applause. <laughs>